I'm on the uh, second floor of a Starbucks in Osaka. I'll be quick, I don't want to bother people here. But you'll see that this is Starbucks, this is a very nice Starbucks. It's better than any Starbucks in the United States. And so the reason for that is because um, ultimately, uh, the, first of all, the reason people think the United States is such a great country, uh, despite the, um, you know, just the, the corruption in uh, political offices, uh, is because of the corporations overseas. And it's not just Starbucks, it's McDonald's, it's almost any, any company uh, it has to compete. In the United States, because the, the dollar is so strong, most companies, um, you know, most American companies are entrenched. So what ends up happening is, and again, this is, this is still a Starbucks, what ends up happening in the United States is there's really no competition. Um, you know, you're not gonna see this in America. But, it, but once an American corporation goes overseas, they have to compete. And as you can see, it's very difficult to compete in, uh, in Japan uh, or in any of the major cities abroad. Uh, so once they come in, they have to be unique, they have to be better than the local competition, and they spend um, a lot of money to make sure they can compete. Uh, whereas in the United States, you know, you might have a situation where you've got, you know, Juan Valdez coffee. Uh, you don't have any coffee shops, even though that's Colombian coffee uh, south of the border. Um, but, you know, because of the, of the uh, insurance and, and a strong dollar and a lot of other issues, uh, you'll notice that the real reality of the situation is that American corporations do not have to compete with international firms within their own borders. But when they go overseas, they're swamped with competition. Uh, so what they end up doing is they typically use the stronger dollar, um, which inhibits competition uh, by foreigners in the United States. They use that strong dollar uh, to hire oftentimes the best designers and the best people in foreign countries. Uh, <clears throat> and oftentimes they do that within a very close network of allies uh, based on, in some cases, post-World War II, um, you know, sort of, uh, not, not, uh, it's not demographics, but just sort of, you know, the way things, the way the dominoes fell, um, you know, chips fell in World War II. Um, and it's very ironic if you're an American because it turns out that, you know, if, if you do visit Tokyo or Osaka or any major city uh, in Southeast Asia, you'll notice it's better than the, than the United States. Um, in, in almost every way, public transportation, um, I mean, it, it's very, except for the weather, um, it's, it's quite hot, uh, it's, and Japan in particular suffers from, you know, tsunamis as well as Indonesia and earthquakes, but you can see with this level of competition, you can't sort of get lazy or you'll go out of business. Um, so anyway, just uh, an interesting situation with how economics interesting it creates a lot of interesting situations i mean it, it's it's particularly interesting because you'll notice like a rolling stone icon here and that's that's i mean i've seen a lot of spider-man um you know paraphernalia and again it's you know here you go you've got a very interesting situation here with the star of david um and so japan and a lot of foreign countries tend to borrow from overseas in order to stand out um and you know you've got a stones bar and so this is very typical for Japan. Um, and it may be just a zoning is a little bit more liberal. Uh, you know, you obviously outside of Times Square, you're not gonna get this level of detail or this level of um, sort of laissez-faire um, advertising. This looks like a French themed cafe, a salon. Yep, it is. <clears throat> Got breakfast over here. And so it's a very interesting situation the way the, the post-World War II interaction between the banking system um, and just the way that allies, the allied economic system worked, worked out. Because as you can see, it's not necessarily a fantastic situation for the United States uh, in the sense that half the country does not have uh, sufficient cash and an education is far too expensive uh, after secondary school, uh, almost anywhere in the country. Um, and so it's, it's, it's interesting how currency strength um, within this network of allies post-World War II sort of creates interesting results um, but a lot of it really is you know at the end at the end of the day a lot of it comes, comes down to competition and, and having to compete um in a foreign country it sort of just makes you better um you know assuming the foreign country has you know a, a fair uh system and that's one of the reasons i like going overseas uh because you don't get this sort of situation um in, in many places but when you do get it uh when well, you do have this level of competition uh, this level of safety, this level of infrastructure, it sort of tells you things are going, something's, something's you know, going well. Um, how exactly and why exactly it's going well, I mean, that's sort of the, 
the great benefit of traveling is that it's sort of up to you to try to figure out, you know, why it is going so well. And of course, you know, there's obviously problems everywhere. Japan has a demographic problem. It's a very, um, it does not have a, a lot of young people compared to a lot of other countries. So again, you have this interesting situation where, you know, currency and inflation, uh, where you know, prices go up, people feel rich, they spend more, they can develop more. Uh, it's not just people, but companies can develop. This is a massive shopping mall. Uh, it's, it's connected to a, a massive network of, of uh, trains. Uh, all that is, is possible because, again, prices went up quite a bit. Land is scarce. Um, but of course, when prices go up too much, too quickly, uh, you end up in a situation where most people can't afford to have kids. We then have a demographic problem. And typically, you solve that demographic problem with immigration. That has not happened in Japan, at least up until now. Um, and so, you've got this really interesting situation where you've got currency, you've got demographics, um, and you've got the legal system tied to the uh, insurance system, all creating really interesting results um, overall with a combination of economic and sociological uh, factors.